Fisherman's rib is worked over an even number of stitches. When we work the stitch pattern back and forth, it is always a good idea to treat the edge stitches as selvages to make sure the fabric has nice, neat side edges. And that's what we're gonna do. And that's how we start the first row of the two row repeat. We slip the first stitch purlwise with the yarn at the back of the work. So the yarn is at the back, I insert the tip of the right needle from right to left and simply slip the stitch off the left needle. So I'm going to treat these salvage stitches as slip stitch salvages. And then we start working the pattern repeat. So we knit one stitch, that is easy, right? And then we make a yarn over, bringing the yarn to the front of the right needle, over the needle and to the back of the work. And we slip one stitch purlwise with the yarn at the back of the work. So now the yarn is at the back and we simply slip the stitch purlwise without twisting the stitch. And that's pretty much it. That's the pattern repeat for this row. So we knit one stitch, make a yarn over and slip one stitch. Knit one stitch, make a yarn over and slip one stitch. And we can simplify even this already simple repeat by bringing the yarn to the front of the work and inserting the tip of the right needle under the strand and into the stitch in one smooth move. And then we slip both the strand that becomes a yarn over now and the stitch again in just one shot. And that makes it faster. So we knit one stitch and then we slip the yarn over and the stitch together in one shot. And we do it until we get to the last stitch. This is our other salvage stitch and we're gonna purl it if we want to make the slip stitch salvages. That was the first row of the pattern repeat. Now we turn the work and work the second row of the pattern repeat, which would be the last row of the pattern repeat. There are just two rows, so simple. We start again by slipping the first stitch purlwise with the yarn at the back of the work to make sure the side edges of our fabric are nice and neat. And then we're gonna knit two stitches together. And when we look at the work, you will see that some of the stitches are kind of paired. And that's the stitches that we're gonna knit. This is the yarn over that we've just created in the previous row and the stitch that we slipped right after we made that yarn over. And we're gonna, in this row, we're gonna knit these two guys together as one stitch like this and we do it as usual through the front loop and then we get to the purl stitch this is a standalone stitch no yarn over so we're gonna purl it just as is and we do it again knit two together which is the yarn over and the stitch and purl one knit two together purl one and so on until we get to the last stitch of the row which is right over here and this is our uh, edge stitch and we're gonna purl it so we always slip the first stitch and purl the last stitch of the row and then we work these two rows of the pattern repeat that we've just worked and as we do that as we work more uh, repeats of these two rows we will form a beautiful gorgeous absolutely amazing texture that is soft and uh, cozy and looks great on many projects on scarves hats the cardigans sweaters every uh, project will benefit from a texture like this that is created by these two simple rows and this texture looks great on both sides of the work the front side looks a bit like condensed one by one ribbing and the wrong side which is not wrong at all looks a lot like brioche stitch as you work this uh, pattern you will notice two things first we work in basically one by one ribbing so we knit the knits and purl the purls in every row and in one row, in row one, we form yarn overs over every purl stitch and in row two we get rid of those yarn overs by knitting them together with the stitch that they are paired with. And once you understand this logic, this pattern becomes so simple that you can make it even without any pattern instructions. You would know that 
you should knit the knit and purl the purls and you know that if after a certain row you have no yarn overs over here that means that in the next row you're gonna make a yarn over in front of every purl stitch and if by the end of the row you see that you have yarn overs over here that means next row is for getting rid of them. And this logic is the same for working this fisherman's rib in um, projects worked flat and in the seamless projects. So when we work this stitch pattern in the round, we would do exactly the same thing. Basically the first round is almost the same as the first row of the pattern worked back and forth. The only difference is the selvages. We don't have them because the uh, seamless project doesn't have any side edges, right? So we simply uh, go to the pattern repeat, the same one as we worked in row one of the uh, this stitch pattern worked back and forth. So we knit one stitch and then we make a yarn over and slip one stitch with the yarn in, at the back of the work. And just as we did when we worked flat, we could bring the yarn to the front of the left needle and then slip both the strand and the uh, stitch together in one quick shot. And that would speed up the process quite a bit. And we do it to the end of the round. Because the round finishes with the yarn over just kind of hanging there, make sure you don't lose it when you uh, rearrange the needles uh, for working the next round. It all depends on the uh, setup that you have, but if you work with the magic loop or five double pointed needles or two circulars, then keep an eye on this little guy, the yarn over. In the next round, so now you see that we have these yarn overs and stitches uh, pairs and in the next round we're gonna get rid of them, we're gonna purl them together. So we knit one stitch and then we purl two stitches together and these two stitches are gonna be the stitch and the yarn over that we formed in the previous round and we keep doing that until the end of the round. The last stitch of the round and now you see that we got rid of all yarn overs and we are back to the original number of stitches. And whether you choose to use this stitch pattern on a project worked back and forth or the one worked in the round, Fisherman's Rib is a simple way to make any project look gorgeous. To get more details about this stitch pattern and to download the full photo tutorial, go to tendroseday.com slash fisherman's dash rib. Happy knitting my friend, I'll talk to you in the next tutorial.